Imagine, if you will, a man. But not just any man. A man of average height, weight, and average build. And then put a layer of borderline buzz cut dark brown hair on. And then paste a full beard of about the same color and trim on. And then finally, apply a slightly broad nose and a pair of hazel eyes. And you have yourself a creation of what my friends and I call Tommy D, or Thomas Derenfeld. And actually, now that I think about it, he looks a lot like a lumberjack at times. <coughs> Tom Derenfeld has been my youth pastor at my church since August of 2012. And in the almost four and a half years since I've met him, Tom has been a great friend and a great mentor for me. And many other, many other students that have been in my youth group and go to my youth group now. He's very happy-go-lucky and he loves attention and he'll find any excuse to, to make a new friend or talk to anyone. And uh, let me actually summarize his job in a few words. <clears throat> Tom teaches tons of things to tons of tough teens. <laughs> I would hope that everyone has someone like Tom in their life. Someone that is really bubbly and can see the good side of things no matter how tough things can get and someone who is always willing to help you and listen to anything that you need. And since Tom has been my youth pastor throughout my entire high school career, I feel like I have gotten to know him in a rather unique way, and he and I have worked together on many different occasions to make sure that the students that come into my youth group have a safe environment where they feel like they can be themselves and if they need it, get help for whatever they need. And ever since Tom began his journey at my church, he has shown many virtuous values, but for the sake of time, I have selected three. Tom exemplifies patience, inclusion, and commitment. If there is one quality that is essential for being a youth pastor, it is patience. Nobody can deal with a lot of immature teenagers if they have a short fuse. It's just not possible. And an excellent example of this is in the summer of 2015, when my youth group was going to Tennessee for a youth conference known simply as Chick. And my youth group has some characters, let's say. Uh, there was one student in particular that just gave Tom the whole runaround. He didn't turn in his forms on time, neglected to submit his payments, didn't get an ID to get through airport security, and he almost got detained coming back to DIA for dressing suspiciously, let's say. He pretty much could have done everything, he pretty much did everything that he could have done wrong on the trip. But Tom kept his cool the entire time, and it's kind of, it's kind of amazing because this student was 18. And so Tom's patience with him was really inspirational and awe-inspiring, considering that, you know, this was actually not just a teen, but an adult that had a lot of responsibility. And Tom hates seeing people by themselves, and so he always makes sure that everyone feels included, no matter where he goes, and especially at our youth group. He hates to see anyone by themselves. And our youth group isn't excessively large, but there are about 30 kids there, if you include the middle schoolers and high schoolers. And almost every Wednesday, Tom has to, you know, gather all these kids together and make sure that every single one of them feels welcome. So in between the middle school time and the high school time, we all kind of gather together and talk and sing songs, and the room really dances. But after that time, when it's right before the time for high schoolers to have their individual time, uh, it's like a little area where we can eat snacks and kind of mingle, and Tom makes sure that everyone talks to someone. And he encourages us to talk to someone we don't know, someone different from us, someone that we haven't seen before, just anyone. And his intentional efforts to include everyone helps demonstrate his commitment to students uh, as a whole and on an individual level as well. And one of his greatest qualities is his commitment, in my opinion. From the very beginning, Tom made an effort to connect with each and every student. And he doesn't ask what we can do to make his job fun, he asks what he can do for us to make our lives meaningful. And when I was a freshman, I was a pretty dumb kid. Now, I know it's kind of hard to believe, but it is true. I got involved some, in some pretty harmful stuff, and I suffered from a lot of extreme depression and anxiety for a long time because of that stuff. And even though Tom had barely known me for a year, he jumped at the chance to support me. He took extra time out of his day to teach me guitar, 
uh, take me out to coffee, just talk with me, make sure that I was doing the best that I could, and showing me the joys of life that I hadn't even thought of before. I guess you could say that he was my good Samaritan during that time. He took extra time out of his day to spend time with me so that I understood that life did have meaning and that I wasn't just by myself in this void of chaos. His commitment to showing me these things helped change my perspective on a lot of things, and I'm very grateful and thankful for Tom for taking his time to spend with me and help me get through this. Tom gives his all to being the best youth pastor he can be, and he works his tail off on a daily to make sure that every student finds their place in the youth group. And he wants to help everybody, middle schoolers and high schoolers, mature and immature, tall and short, young and old, loud and quiet, anybody. And in closing, I have a request. If any of you don't have somebody like Tom in your life, then I suggest you find somebody. Thank you.